Hello YouTube, in this video we're going to be looking at one weapon, or more specifically, one attachment. That would be the grenade launcher for Planetside 2, or rather the Noob 2. Some people argue that it is easily one of the most powerful weapons in the game. However, I question its usefulness. In this video we're going to be going over the pros and cons of using the grenade launcher and weigh its value. Now the first thing you might be wondering is, how do I obtain the grenade launcher? Well, one carbine and one assault rifle for each faction can equip it. If you have the weapon, the attachment is only 100 certs, a relatively cheap attachment, if you have the station cash for the weapon. Each faction has two weapons that can use underbarrel attachments, the same weapon for the grenade launcher, underbarrel shotgun, and smoke grenade launcher. Each faction has one carbine and one assault rifle that is capable of performing that duty, so the grenade launcher can be used by light assaults, engineers, and medics. Each of the six weapons for all three factions seem to have the exact same cost, either 500 certs or 700 station cash. Without station cash, it's 600 certs to afford it and the weapon. Now something you'll notice about the weapons that can play host to the grenade launcher is that they are all markedly worse than their counterpart weapon. This applies to all three carbines as well as all three assault rifles. In return for using a grenade launcher, the weapon in itself becomes less useful due to a direct slash to its stats. This applies to the gun regardless of if you have the grenade launcher attachment on it or not. Statistically speaking, each of these weapons is worse than at least one other weapon in its category. This applies to each faction and each weapon. The simple fact is that if you are using the grenade launcher or any of the underbarrel attachments, you are using a weapon that is subpar compared to a different weapon from the same faction and same weapon category. So the question is, how much is the grenade launcher really worth? Let's start by going over the grenade launcher itself, then we'll go over the faction weapons. The grenade launcher offers a mix of bonuses and hindrances. On one hand, it offers what are effectively free explosives, though it does negligible damage to vehicles. The grenade launched by the noob tube, henceforth referred to as the 203, doesn't do as much damage as a thrown grenade, but has the benefit of being launched and detonating on contact. Normal thrown grenades cost infantry resources and can be dodged much more easily, especially by a light assault player. C4 bricks cost over double the price of a grenade and are a light assault player's primary way to kill max units and only way to kill tanks. So if you're a light assault or an engineer who runs with a high explosive kit, pecking C4 and or a grenade bandolier, and many light assaults do this, infantry resources might be precious to you and therefore worth conserving. The 203 gives you another option to avoid spending normal grenades, allowing you to spend those infantry resources on C4 or utility grenades, using the noob tube as an anti-infantry substitute. And that's the main benefit of the noob tube, the fact that 203 rounds are completely free, costing no resources at all. Furthermore, they can be replenished with ammunition canisters dropped by engineers, which you can't do with C4 or normal grenades. You can also obtain additional 203 rounds from your own ammunition canister, though this seems to be a bit buggy at the moment, despite it being post-launch. But, an engineer with the ammunition canister working properly could sit in one spot and continuously fire the grenade launcher. For a light assault or a medic, you only have two 203s before needing to find ammunition resupplies. If you tend to play with random squads, and a lot of players do, then its usefulness will be called into question. If you don't have quick access to a resupply, its usefulness will be greatly diminished. You have only two rounds, and that's the weapon's major weakness. Are those two rounds going to secure you more kills and better kills than you could have had with a better primary weapon and differently spent cert points? If you are a light assault or a medic, unless you join a gang and consistently play with your homies and always have extra rounds within arm's reach, which may be rare for a light assault even if you do play with an organized group, only having two shots before having to search for ammunition is a severe drawback. So what kind of killing power do you really have with these two shots? Well, first off, both flak armor and nanoweave armor provide protection against this weapon, making it double dip in terms of the player categories that will have resistance to it. A body shot seems to always secure a kill to a non-max if the enemy is far enough away, but hitting nearby seems to spare enemies frequently. The explosive seems to be more powerful the further it's traveled. At close range, the weapon's damage is dramatically reduced, going so far as doing zero damage if the target is too close. However, the damage still seems to vary and is inconsistent. Inside shotgun range, the kill radius of the weapon is very small, requiring you to hit very close to your enemy to kill them or do significant damage. Though this seems to still be buggy, despite me recording this on December 4th, sometime after release. I've killed enemies from several feet from the blast radius, and also had enemies live despite the round landing much closer, mostly depending on how far away they were. However, inconsistency for both of these makes me believe the weapon is still buggy. In super close range where knifing is an option, you're better off switching to your carbine than you are using the grenade launcher. The claim on the wikia is that it can kill max units in two direct hits, but only under certain circumstances. My hit on a max unit that was already below half health didn't kill it, and even compensating for max flak armor, if it kills in two shots by default, it still should have done much more damage. 
I'd have to conclude that the close range damage reduction affects max units too, so you'd need to land a direct hit from a larger distance. However, in many cases, you could just C4 a max unit in the time it takes to fire, reload, and fire the grenade launcher again anyway. It goes to the point where, I think if you have a better and more reliable primary weapon, you may be able to kill enemies more efficiently than you could with a grenade launcher. The formula in my videos for calculating killing power assumes that you're fighting two or more enemies at the same time, or plan to kill several targets in a row. Having to reload after one shot and limited ammunition capacity makes its usefulness questionable, if you plan to go beyond one for one or one for two trade-offs. The grenade launcher is more likely to be a worthwhile investment for an engineer, but as an engineer, sitting on an ammo canister and spamming grenade rounds, the task might be somewhat tedious. And at that point, your primary weapon isn't the carbine, it's the grenade launcher. Further separating the attachment from its host is the fact that you cannot use an INRV scope with a grenade launcher at the same time. You can put it on the weapon, but if you have the launcher selected instead of the normal bullets, you can't zoom down the night vision scope. So if you want to make use of the night vision scope and the grenade launcher, you'll have to switch to the normal carbine, use the scope, switch back to the grenade launcher, and then fire. There's also an equipping delay that blocks your ability to fire the noob tube for a moment as you draw it, further reducing the nighttime viability. If you want the grenade launcher to go with a carbine or an assault rifle and actually be an attachment for the weapon and not your primary weapon in itself, that'll bring us to the next category, the faction weapon drawbacks. For Terran Republic-led assaults and engineers, the host carbine is one of the worst. The carbine for TR players are homogenized and are all very similar, as covered in my previous video. The weapon that can host the grenade launcher is objectively worse than the default weapon, which in turn can be considered worse than the Lynx. This means that if you select the weapon, you're giving up potential power for your normal carbine, as well as a potential upgrade for it. For TR medics, the assault rifle that can host it is objectively worse than all the cycler variants. It could be better than the other two assault rifles that deviate down smaller magazine size paths and more accuracy or damage, but that's subject to personal playstyle and is debatable. For the new conglomerate, each carbine brings something unique or different to the table, except the Gauss Compact S, which is worse than the default, but hosts the grenade launcher. For their medics, you once again have a bit of variety, but the weapon is, again, a downgrade from the default. For the Vanu carbines, you're offered a similar scenario to the TR carbines, with one being almost a direct upgrade to the default, and the Solstice SF, the grenade launcher gun, being directly worse than the default, which is in turn worse than the VX-67. For their assault rifles, if you prefer fire rate and accuracy to reload speed, the same scenario happens again. The weapon that can host the grenade launcher is the Equinox, which is worse than the Equinox Burst, which is similar to the Pulsar, which is worse than the HV-45. The Equinox is superior to the CME, but not really to the NS. But every Vanu assault rifle is better than the CME, which disqualifies it in the first place. In general, I'd say that the new conglomerate suffers the least from taking the grenade launcher, because the weapon playing host to it isn't as dramatically outclassed by other obtainable weapons as it is for Vanu or TR players, therefore causing less of a potential loss. I'm not saying that NC guns are better, but they have less of a sacrifice should they use a launcher. The projectile does travel relatively fast, and with a bit of practice can be used to engage enemies at long range, but you'll have to consider if a more powerful carbine might serve that purpose better, especially after you've exhausted your two shots. You could get multi-kills from the grenade launcher if enemies are close together, but they're required to be so close that I don't see that kind of scenario taking place with consistency. For me, personally, I don't think the use of a grenade launcher is a sentiment that I can co-sign with. I tend to fight close quarters, and I've seen far too many hits with the grenade launcher that didn't result in kills, and then required a reload. And with the time it takes to fire two launcher shots, I could have planted a brick of C4 and detonated it, or shot a target and killed it normally with a better weapon. This combined with only having two shots leads me to conclude that I'm better off with a normal weapon, and that makes the grenade launcher unappealing to me. So I don't see myself running a kit with it. I can see someone who is constantly strapped for infantry resources and is spending resources on C4 with none left for grenades using it. I can see some engineers using it. I can see medics running revive grenades or light assaults with smoke or flash grenades using it. And I can see people who tend to avoid close quarters using it. The grenade launcher can fill a niche for people who need a little extra anti-infantry explosive power and fight often from range. But for someone that's been using a shotgun or hangs out inside of bio labs, the grenade launcher is probably not for them. Summary. The grenade launcher provides access to free anti-infantry explosives, granting potential cost effectiveness, as the rounds do not require infantry resources like normal grenades or C4 do. However, these explosives have almost no use against vehicles, making them anti-infantry only, and effectively a cheaper substitute for normal grenades. Its damage increases the farther the rounds has traveled, and cannot reliably kill enemies that are inside shotgun range. When too close, it's outclassed by the normal weapon it will be attached to for all three factions, making it less favorable for those who participate in close quarters fighting regularly. It only allows two shots, unless you're near a resupply, 
Barring access to a resupply, this makes it useless after two shots, where you'll be operating with a subpar weapon for your continued stated anti-infantry purposes. It requires you to use a subpar weapon in order to equip it regardless of faction, though it screws over new conglomerate players the least. Taking the above information into account, the real question is going to be, can you, with your playstyle, get enough use out of the grenade launcher to cover for the hit you'll take in not having as good a weapon, or otherwise missing a rail attachment, or spending your certs elsewhere? For certain playstyles, it may be useful, but for others, it'll only be holding you back. I guess the answer to that is up to you. Hopefully the information I provided will assist you in deciding if the grenade launcher attachment is right for you or not. I'll see you next time.